over 24 startups launched and hundreds of thousands of dollars made. That's Mark and he's one of many entrepreneurs who build cool stuff on the internet. And if you're wondering how they all do that, it's quite simple. Boilerplate. So if you've ever built some kind of an app, you know how painful it is to just do the basics. You have to connect to a database, handle authentication, then do the payments and also style everything up so it looks good. And by the time you finish all those things, you don't know what your app idea was all about. That's why recently Mark's shipfast has been blowing up and it's his boilerplate that has all of the basic stuff included. So you have to focus on only one thing, which is building your app. I think it's an amazing product, but I honestly prefer a different tech stack to his. He's using Next.js and MongoDB or Superbase, I think, whereas I'd rather use Spellkit and Firebase. And I haven't really found anything that resembles this, but I thought, well, I'm a developer, why don't I make such a thing for myself? And that's what today's video is all about. I'm going to show you how you can build your own boilerplate using your preferred technologies so that you can build and ship your apps faster. But first, let's talk what we should include inside. So no matter the product, whether it's software as a service or a single payment, you will need four essential things and basically you will need them every single time. So that's authentication to let users sign in and use your app, a database to store all their information, an email to send them payment confirmations or information about updates, and also some kind of a payment provider to let them pay for your product. That is the meat of your app, but depending on the niche you're in, you might also want to add some other stuff like AI models or search if you're really going to use them every single time. So now you know what you need to cover and it's time to assemble your tech stack. That means a front-end UI library, a back-end server with a database, and some APIs to glue everything together. So for the front-end, you're most likely going to choose JavaScript since it's the most popular option. And with that, you choose a framework such as React, Angular, Svelte, or Vue, or even Solid.js, depending on your preference. Although I think you should also consider a full stack option such as Next for React, uh, Next for Vue, or Svelte Kit for Svelte. That saves you the hassle of setting up a backend server since you can put everything in one directory. You should also consider some kind of a CSS framework such as Tailwind and plug in an additional UI library such as DaisyUI or Shatsian. There's plenty of those so that you can build your components faster. For the database, you have two options. You can either choose a document-based database and the most popular options here are MongoDB and Firebase or you can choose an SQL-based database and that would be probably Postgres or MySQL. If you plan to use SQL, it would be a good idea to bring an object relational mapper such as Prisma to avoid writing long SQL queries. Now, authentication. You can go with something free and open source like auth.js or you can use the built-in authentication methods uh, in Firebase or in Superbase if you're using one of them. Now it's time for payments and by far the most popular option here is Stripe but you can also look up Lemon Squeezy. I've seen some people use it. So go through the documentation of both of them and see what you prefer to use. And for mail, popular options would include Mailgun, SendGrid or Postmark. Now it's time for the big decision. You have to choose the tech stack that you're going to use on all your future projects. Choose wisely because it's not easy to switch once you've made your decision. If you're not sure, build some small projects first and see what you like the most. Now let's quickly go through the process of building such boilerplate. The first thing that I would like you to do is to set up a Notion doc and create these little like code blocks and put every single npm uh, install command that you have so that you can quickly uh, set up a new project and copy paste all of these to your terminal and install every single dependency. As you can see, I have the npm create here for creating the app, then installing .env, then installing Firebase, Tailwind, and I also did some steps to what I need to enable in the Firebase console. Here is the config for Svelte and Tailwind, and also another config file. I need to create a new app.css file later, and that takes care of the whole Tailwind configuration, as you can see right here. And you can also install, uh, as I mentioned before, a UI library. I choose Daisy UI. 
Also, we have to install Stripe for payments, as I chose. And I also like to create this simple .env template. I made a little reminder because I was fixing a bug for like an hour before I got that I didn't import this single thing. And also, I like to install Toast notifications in my apps to notify users. And that takes care of my whole SaaS setup. So after I install everything, I'd set up my project, I'd open it in VS Code, this is my editor of choice, and here I would first focus on my folder structure. So a typical project looks like this, that you have the SRC folder right here, then you have the lib directory, and here you can store components to reuse them in the future. I created uh, an auth uh, component like uh, subdirectory to store the auth check that will I can put uh, over every single uh, other component uh, to make it only accessible for signed in users. And I also made a subdirectory for UI to store every single UI component that I want. And this will grow with time uh, whenever I create a new project and I come up with something cool, I can just put, uh, just copy this component and put it right here uh, so I can use it in the future. Then we have the server uh, folder which stores my uh, admin.ts that's configuring Firebase and stripe.ts where I simply export my uh, stripe object so I can use it everywhere else. And also I have the firebase.ts uh, file which is simply going to create a user store so I can access it uh, and get data in real time. So I think the priority is to configure your uh, authentication database first. So I would start with configuring Firebase and doing the admin part. And also remember to configure your .env file so you can access your API keys everywhere. And remember not to publish it on any public repo. So put it in the .ignore Git ignore file right here. And if you're using Firebase, remember to also ignore the service account.json file. So after you've got that out of the way, simply focus on getting the logging first. So create a login route and uh, try to authenticate your user. And then you can uh, redirect them to the subscribe section where they can pay for a product. Most people say that you should not offer a free tier. So I think it's a good idea to put the uh, subscribe like a sub route in login and then create an account route to give your users uh, a way to manage their billing. As you can see, I also have the API folder here and it's mainly for managing Stripe. So we have the checkout route for the API, the portal route for managing billing and the webhook which listens for payments. And after everything is done, you can go and create your app in the app subdirectory here. So now let me show you how it looks in the web. I know it's weird, but I started with building my boilerplate first instead of any product, but I'm going to fill my landing page uh, components uh, when I start to build one. For now, it looks like this. <laughs> it only has a button, but when you click it, you will be redirected to a login route. And here you can, for example, log in with Google. After you log in, you will be asked to choose your plan. And here uh, you can simply uh, put in the data of your Stripe prices uh, under these plans and it will redirect to the Stripe checkout with the correct data. And then after all of that is done, you can simply redirect your users to the app directory where they will be able to use your application. In the beginning, it doesn't have to be anything more than this. It just needs to work so that you can focus on building the app and the landing page and you don't have to focus on the annoying things like authentication and payments. So that covers how to build your boilerplate. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a full step-by-step -step tutorial with writing code along with me uh, on how to build a boilerplate like this in Spellkit and Firebase. Also, there's one more thing, the most important one actually. For this work, you need to set up a Git repository with all of the code you've just written. And then when you want to access the boilerplate, all you've got to do is run a git clone command. I know it sounds and looks like a lot, but imagine how much time you're going to save if you put all these hours up front right now and you will never have to do all these set of things ever again. And the best thing is, whenever you come up with something new or interesting while you're making your app, 
you can always extract that thing and add it to your bottle plate so you have it accessible on all times. So now all you need to do is focus on your brilliant app idea and just launch it as fast as you can. Let me know what tech stack you use to build your startups. Also, huge shout out to Mark for starting this trend. I'll see you in the next one.